talk about today, try to talk about, is the subject listed here, global climate change, human causes and responses. I think I can say that with the experts in this audience today, there are many of you, some old friends and other people I've just heard of, that probably each one of you would have presented this lecture differently. Well, bear with me, I'm going to uh, do it in the following way. This is an outline of the parts of the talk that I'm going to go through today. First of all, a look at Earth as a planet, the energy budget of the planet. It gives you a very strong clue as to what's going on and why it is we have any concern over human activities. And from there, we'll talk about the greenhouse effect and the, the existence of greenhouse gases that are accumulating in Earth's atmosphere now due to human activities. Then I'll go into some recent climate change data with a great deal of emphasis on the last 30 years because it's then that the signal has really emerged and we can see what's going on. A focus on temperatures, sea level, and polar ice. Then I'll switch into the dominant cause and that is carbon dioxide from fossil fuel burning and give you some of the patterns of what's going on and what it is that we're going to have to get under control to slow down this problem and to eventually solve it mentioning a first step towards solution, which is energy efficiency amongst everything else. Okay, I hope that you can see. I've been told that these slides are fairly visible, but if we really have to lower the lights, I think we could try it. Please, if you can't see things well, let us know. This depiction is obviously a cartoon of the Earth with the sun shining on it, and the sun is certainly not to scale at the distance it is, but I want to show you some numbers. The 342 represents the number of watts per square meter that fall on the Earth atmosphere system on a day-night average. Now, obviously, at night, it's wherever you are on Earth, it's zero, and in the daytime, it's more. But averaged over every surface, every part of the Earth, averaged over a year, we receive 342 watts per square meter, a little bit larger than a square yard. And about 105 of those watts are reflected before they're absorbed in the Earth's system by white surfaces, the tops of white clouds, snow and ice surfaces on the surface of the Earth, the, even the ocean at certain angles when it's quite reflective. And of course, light-colored clothing, those of us who have hair that's tending towards white or those of us who are bald, very shiny, reflect the light very well. Whereas those of us who have dark hair and dark clothing or dark, wet soil that's black absorbs the light. This 105 is reflected from the top of bright surfaces. So the remainder, 342 minus 105 on an annual average, is absorbed somewhere in the atmosphere Earth system. Now, if all the Earth did here was absorb light from the sun, in the number of 237 watts per square meter, the Earth would heat up rather rapidly. But in fact, we know that the same number, very closely, of watts per square meter leaves the Earth and is radiated back out to empty cold space in the form of planetary infrared radiation. So the budget, so to speak, of the planet Earth, the Earth energy budget is visible light and a little bit of ultraviolet comes in from the sun 237 watts per square meter is absorbed somewhere in the, the dirty part of the atmosphere on the surface. Otherwise, the visible light penetrates all the way down to the surface. Uh, and the counterbalancing exiting part of the energy is, as I said, infrared planetary radiation. Now, this greenhouse, however, there's a, there's a complication here that down in the lowest part of the of the Earth's atmosphere, there's enough uh, infrared absorbing air to absorb some of the outgoing radiation and it gets kind of trapped and bounces around in the lower atmosphere before it escapes. So we've known for some time that there's a natural greenhouse effect. And the evidence that there is a strong greenhouse effect can be seen very easily by trying to calculate the temperatures of the planets from this very simple formula. Namely, the amount of sunlight coming in, we've measured this now very well from satellites and other instruments, multiplied by one minus the reflectivity 
tells you how much is absorbed. And that amount being absorbed should be equal to the Stefan-Boltzmann law. The temperature of the Earth or the effective temperature of the Earth enters like this. So from this very simple equation, if it were a steady state with no time change, we could calculate the effective temperature of the planet. And lo and behold, when we do it for Mars, we get the right answer. There are small day-night differences on Mars, but generally speaking, the answer is correct. And the reason that is, is there's a very small greenhouse effect on Mars so that this, we can calculate the surface temperature of Mars without anything complicated here except this formula because we can ignore the greenhouse effect due to the low pressure of the air and the low content of, of air of gases in the Martian atmosphere. When we do the same calculation for Earth, we fail. And the reason we fail is the existence of the greenhouse effect. We can calculate the effective temperature of Earth's atmosphere above the surface